Okay, let's get started. So this is actually called All About Twig, or Templating in Twig with Drupal 8. My name is Megan McDermott, and my company is called Woolwich Webworks. We call ourselves a small team that can do big things, and using open source and Drupal and being part of this community is what allows us to do that. Uh, there's a little bit more about me that you can read there, and uh, I just realized the other day that I've been doing website development for about half my life now, which is pretty crazy. And yeah, 20 years ago last summer, I remember making my first website. When I discovered Netscape Composer, I realized that I could make my own website, and I still think it's pretty awesome to be able to do this. So we're going to spend maybe 10 or 15 minutes looking through some slides of Twig basics and then we'll spend the rest of the time looking at some actual template code and kind of see how some of this stuff works in, in real template files. So Twig was adopted for templating in Drupal 8. Um, it seems like it was a pretty quick decision and an easy no-brainer to do and this is another part of getting off the island and using things that are used in a lot of other ways in the PHP community. Um, one of the things I think is cool is that you can see all these other frameworks and tools that use Twig as well so then you can get off the island as well if it makes sense for a particular project. Um, it also helps with security and a big concern with uh, PHP template was that there's opportunities for security issues in template files and you know, as a good developer you wouldn't do that sort of thing anyway but not everyone is uh, that aware and it's also a good developer experience well it's a lot easier to use and access um, the values that you need with twig rather than trying to figure out all this php stuff so here's some basics um, so for printing something out you have two curly brackets that just outputs in this case a title uh, to do something, you start with a curly bracket and a percent sign, so we'll see how that works in some real template files in a little bit. So with things like this that you can do in Twig template files are things like setting variables or if statements or loops, and we'll look into different ways to embed or include other code or different things like that. And a curly bracket with a hash is a comment. So I think on all these slides I have some documentation where you can download my slides from the Drupal, Drupal North uh, website and read more and find out more about how to use these different things. Outputting field values to access parts of a render array you can do content dot your field or your field zero is the first value. And we'll see a lot of different examples of how that actually works in different cases in different template files. You can check the comments. Every Drupal default template has a whole lack of comments at the top that show you which variables are available to that template and what you can use there. And you can use preprocess functions to change or add to the variables that are available there. And that's a really powerful thing about Drupal theming that lets you do all kinds of crazy stuff. And if you, there's something there that you need that's not, then that's what preprocess functions are for. There's a really good Medium article here. This was just on the Drupal newsletter the other day. Um, a lot of really detailed instructions on how to get different field values and different parts of field values or link fields or t the title of a link field and things like that. So that's a good place to go if you need more detailed examples. So Twig filters is a way to modify the output and change what's coming from that field value or whatever else you're outputting. You can use most PHP string functions in there, and that's what's in the Twig templating um, documentation there. Drupal has added a bunch more that are really interesting, and you can probably recall these things if you have Drupal 7 experience. So translations is a big one, and of course it's best practice to just output everything, any text you're outputting into a template file to translate it, even if you think this is never going to be translated. Maybe it might be, and then you're in the practice of doing that if you ever contribute code back to Drupal.org. Clean class is a good one. It'll strip out everything, any spaces, special characters, convert underscores to hyphens, and make a nice clean class. And that's one of the first things you'll probably see in a template file that we'll look at in a few minutes. Without is hiding elements in render arrays. So in Drupal 7, you might remember there was a hide thing where you'd hide the field and then you'd output it later. And that was kind of a big thing that's 
was easier to do in Drupal 7. So here this is the same kind of thing. If you want to output the content from the Manage Display setting in your entity without those fields, then you can just run it through the without filter and leave out the fields that you don't want to render there. And there's more information on the Drupal.org documentation. So using variables and conditionals. So this is actually just uh, different ways of doing variables. And you can set a variable that you might use in different ways later. You can set you know, a simple variable or the classes as an array. And um, again, this is one of the simple examples of how this is used in a lot of template files. And I think most any template file is going to set classes first particularly for nodes, and that's an example from the classy theme of how it's generating classes. So it's setting a classes array, there's a node, there's a node type is the, and you can see the little squiggly there is like a concatting, like a dot in PHP, <coughs> and that's combining those two into one class, into one element there. And this is, um, the next one there is a little, um, one line conditional, if there's a view mode, then add that as a clean class. Conditionals and loops and more different things that you can do. So you can do simple conditionals. If there's a title, then print the title. Or you can do a lot more complicated things with ands or ors and different combinations of that. There's loops. That's a common thing in a field template when there's multiple items. So you loop through the number of the items that are there, I'll put them in list elements. Um, attributes is something that a lot of uh, renderers have um, that comes out of Drupal that are rendered in the template file, and we'll see how that works in a little bit as well. Attaching a library, so libraries are an interesting part of Drupal 8 theming where we can attach a library only where it's going to be needed, and if it's only going to be needed on this template file, you can attach that, and Classy's node template file is a good example of where it's attaching a library just for that template and wherever it's used. Um, macros are also interesting, and if we get a chance, we'll look at that in the men menu template where it's actually kind of repeating itself to generate a nested menu structure. Paths and URLs. We can also generate URLs. URLs expect a system root, which to me was really confusing in Drupal 8, but um, you can often Google how to get a path to a specific entity, or there's a really great reference from Chromatic at the bottom here that has all kinds of different samples of how to create routes to a view or an entity and how to pass arguments. If you want to link to a view with arguments, then you can pass that as the um, parameters there. And that's what we see in the second example, which is a path to an entity node, and it's passing in the node ID, which this template is already aware of the node object, and it's going to get the node ID and pass that in. And I believe the Drupal.org documentation has a little bit more examples of how to get a file URL, so that's an also an interesting thing that you can do directly in Twig. And all this really enables us to do a lot more on the template level, which we used to maybe have to do in a pre-processed function, and it got pretty complicated. So it gives you a lot of power to do things just at the template level. And it's also a lot of flexibility to do things on a template or do it in a pre-processed function, which is always a challenge to figure out the best way and the most consistent way to do things blocks and embeds and includes. We're going to see some examples of this in a little bit, uh, different ways to include code or, or reference and sort of make your code more dry by not repeating things. So an include references a file, and you need to pass in any variables. And there's a subtle difference between using an include and using an embed. So an embed directly embeds the file in the template, and it uses the same variables. Um, there's more subtleties to that, which is explained in the chapter 3 article. It's, at the bottom there, but that's kind of the basic of it, is that you use an embed if you want to use the same variables that are in that template file, and in include, you have to pass in the variables that that template is expecting. And I'll show a couple different examples of that in a little bit, so you can kind of see what the difference might be and what you might use that in different situations. Um, include tends to be useful in really uh, component-based theming techniques where you're kind of using a component that might expect different values depending on 
where it's coming, where it's being used. Uh, block and embed is a little bit different. It's a little bit of an in inverse. It kind of defines a section of a template that can then be overridden by child templates. So this is an example from the standard block template from Classy or Stable would use, and we'll, I'll show you that template as well. So it's kind of defining a section of that template. Everything else in that template is going to stay the same. That is, child template is only able to override that section that's defined in the block. And debugging. Um, debugging, you can just debug directly in Twig. You can dump. That's the Twig's default. Or if you have Devel and Kint module installed, you can Kint and output your field values there and get it right in the template where you are. So that's another great way to use Twig. And that's all the slides I really have. We're going to actually switch over to looking at some code. So this is, I think, a page template file from Classy, I believe, yes. So you can see we have all the template, the variables at the top that this template knows about. There's a lot of standard things like whether it's, it's the front page, whether the person is logged in or not, so you can use those in conditionals. And this template is pretty simple. There's not a lot of complicated stuff going on. We're just going to output the regions in the page template file. This might be the first thing you do when you're creating a new theme is change around the regions and put in different wrappers in there. So this is just outputting the regions that are defined by Classy. We have a couple of if statements. There's an if statement. If there's something in the page sidebar first, it's going to put a wrapper around there and then it'll put the value, and then we don't get any stray wrappers lying around when they're not being, in, being used. So that's really about it for Classy's page template file. And here's Classy's node template, and we saw this classes array earlier. Again, up at the top, there's a huge long list of all these variables that this template knows about. It's going to set the classes as an array. It's a variable, so we have things like the little squiggly where it's combining the words node type with the node bundle with a clean class to create a class that it's added. It's doing a little inline conditional. If it's promoted, then add the node promoted. Whoever uses that, but you know, it's part of defaults. The things that have always been part of Drupal, whether it's promoted or sticky, and node is published or unpublished. If there's a view mode, this is this little snippet that I just showed earlier. If there's a view mode, add that as a clean class. And it's attaching the library, so we looked at that earlier as well. It's attaching the node classy slash node library just when this template file is in use. And here is where those classes are going to be added. So attributes have some special methods that you can add class, you can remove classes, and there's different ways to use that. So this is where the classes are just output as the array there. Then it's outputting the title prefix if it's not the page, so that's pretty standard Drupal. If, there's, if it's a different view mode, if it's a teaser or whatever, it's going to output the title with the title attributes and the URL. Here's another conditional. If Display submitted is set, it, set, and that's a variable that's asked, that's mentioned in the comments up above. And then this is all the standard Drupal default footer stuff. Here's a translation, so we can do a translation as a block. It's going to translate the submitted by, and this translation block is good for when you're kind of passing in variables to a translation statement. It's going to submit it by, and then it's going to use the author name there. So that's Classy's node template. I'm going to show you a website that we just launched last week. And this is a site that it looks pretty basic. It's something that was actually originally developed by someone who wasn't super experienced with Drupal. So we took it over about a year ago, migrated it to Drupal 8, some remnants lying around from, from the original development. And um, it's a kind of standard Drupal-ish kind of site. It's got articles. They have comments. Uh, you can log in and use some flags and different things like that. So it's got all these submitted lines. The client wanted these to open in a new window, which I didn't argue about, but we have a little hover that I'm going to show you how that's done in Twig um, to say that this opens in a new window. 
and we're hoping to get a new logo and a new look sometime. And it's a good way to work on the site iteratively with just kind of a basic looking theme and then the client gets an idea of how he wants things to work exactly. So I'm going to show you some of these node templates that are, that are used for this front page and there's three different view modes here. You can see this is what I call a mini teaser over here and then there's a bigger, I think this is actually the teaser and then there's a card view mode used for the down. Some of the card view modes in other sections have sharing links and if you're logged in there's some flags there as well. So it's a, I think I didn't mention that it's a website for news and information in the pharmaceutical industry. And our client actually has a pretty good following on LinkedIn so he's expecting people to want to interact with his con content here. So this is the node template for the card view mode and it's the default for most of those view modes on the front page. And we're going to use some set the classes again. I've stripped this down to remove some of those default classy things like whether it's sticky or promoted because we don't need that sort of thing. Keep it simple. And here we have an embed. So I think I didn't show over here is these open in a light box. And originally we had some more stuff here. We had sharing links. So um, we wanted, this is actually opening a different view mode, which uses a module. And if I wish I remembered what it was called, but that's okay. So it's actually going to embed that. It's the different view modes are using this light box trigger. So it's actually embedding that. And that template is here. So it's kind of got all these conditionals. There's videos, content, there's some are PDFs. Some are images. Sometimes if there's a PDF, there might be a default image that's uploaded to use in the teaser view. Anyway, so we have a whole bunch of conditionals here that say, you know, if this other variable, which I've defined in a pre-process function, is defined, then use this image. If not, use, oh, this is actually interesting. This is passing in a different image style, so after a while we realize that, oh, this view mode is going to be the same as that view mode, but it's just going to need a different, different image style. It's going to need the bigger image. And that's actually used further down on the home page. And I didn't want to start a whole new, whole new view mode and have to deal with all those display settings, when really the only difference is that the image style is a little bit bigger. And we can see that down here. So we have these card view, mode, view modes, which is exactly the same as these ones, but these ones are a little bit bigger, or should be a little bit bigger. So this is actually merging a different image style, and that's another filter we can pass in. If we want, just want to use a different image style in this particular case, you can do that based on whatever conditionals you have. So it's merging the array, merging the image style to use the big card image style instead of whatever the default is. And then we have a bunch of other conditionals. If there's image, I think that's a bit of a legacy thing. This has changed around quite a bit, so I've got some stuff in here that might not actually be used anymore. Um, if it's a video, then input the video, otherwise this is a case where it's a PDF, output the PDF, unless there's an image, then use the image instead. So that was actually embedded here in the node template and it's actually using all the same variables that were available to the node template. It's just kind of embedding it so it can be reused in different ways. Then we have the usual stuff, I'll put the title prefix, don't delete the title prefix or suffix, that's where the contextual links go. I've had that problem, where do the contextual links go, why aren't they there? Oh, I deleted the title suffix. So this is a little bit of a conditional here if it's an external link, and I have a bunch of conditionals in the theme file that figure out whether it should be showing an external link or not, and this has to do with whether the client has added more content or not, or if he just wants to go to the website where that content was originally from. And here we're actually using an include. And it's passing var variables from this template to the include. So it's creating that little hover effect where you can mouse over and see. There it is, link new window. 
So this is used in a couple different ways and I want to make sure that it's consistent and that it's saying the same thing and it's opening in a new window and I don't need this bracket here. And it's going to give it a class, new window parent, and then we have some CSS in the background that's going to trigger the little hover overlay so that users are warned and screen re readers can tell that this is going to open in a new window. So that one is passing in as an include. It's passing in the label, which is the label, which is the title in this tempo file, and the URL that it wants to go to, which is a field that's just set to show a plain URL. And otherwise, if it's not set to show an external link, else just output the label. Here we have the content without, and there is a whole bunch of fields here that are going to be rendered in that light box trigger embed that we have, so we're going to hide a whole bunch of stuff there and output it someplace else. It's always good to have that content all, even if I'm hiding almost everything, it's always good to have it there anyway, just in case we decide to add something and remember wondering, why isn't that showing up? All right. There's a couple more embeds. So we have this node submitted, and this is one of those things that appears in every view mode. I want it to appear consistently. It's going to have the same kind of variables that are available in that node template. And this is the kind of thing like we saw in the classes, default display submitted. If display submitted, we're going to have some author attributes, which might be handled by even different modules might add to that. Um, and as we saw on this site, we are using the source handle, the Twitter handle. So we actually want the, the attribution to link directly to the Twitter account. And that's something that the client wants to do to encourage social media interaction and um, that sort of thing. So it's actually going to get the source handle out of a field. I didn't want the client to have to worry about generating a Twitter link or finding the Twitter link. It's all going to be the same. So we're just going to get the field value, which is a, a field with is a taxonomy, actually, in this case, since he references a lot of the same sources over and over again. So it's going to get the plain text value of that. And then the plain text value is actually going to include the at symbol. That's how he's entered it. So it's going to be at heat informatics is his handle or um, at whatever your handle is. So I wanted to take out the at symbol. And what's easier, easiest way to do that? This is a neat little thing. It's actually an array slice. So I'm going to set the Twitter URL to twitter.com slash source handle minus that at symbol. Um, and I believe that's in the, in the Twig documentation on Sensia Labs, where you can see how some of this stuff works. And then it's going to link that in a new window. So this is a different way that it's using that include. And I'm passing in different variables to the same include template. It's going to include link new window, with the label as the source handle, and the URL as the Twitter URL. So now I'm passing different variables to an included template rather than using an embed, which expects the same variables. And then we have another conditional if that has this date added, which is a custom date field, which is the published date of the article that he's referencing, not necessarily the date that the article was updated. So I want to print that date if it's there, and if not, it's going to print the default uploaded date. So here we said to set a little value variable to reset the date variable that's already there into the field value. All right. So that is that whole node teaser. We have another embed at the bottom, which is going to embed the social links, and it has socials and uh, just socials and a flag like, but I've had other template files, which I'll look at in a minute, where that might be referenced in different ways or laid out in different ways. So we keep that consistent, keep the wrapper consistent, whatever classes are on there are consistent. So that file is actually mostly embeds right there. So here's the full template, no template version of the same content and this one is the same sort of thing. It's setting classes, it's adding the classes in the in the main wrapper article element. We're going to use the content without. And this is a case where some articles have an actual 
body content where there's some stuff here that he's written and we were going to put the social links over here with the image. Other cases this isn't there and we just wanted to render the social links right away. So we have a couple conditionals that are going to do that. If there's no body then just put the socials right there. Otherwise they're going to be further down with the image. Is there anything interesting here? Okay. So let's go to the block template. And this is what shows you where the block and extends work, which is a little bit differently from the includes. So here's a standard block template from Classy, and it's going to set the classes like we've seen already. It's going to have the title prefix, and if there's the label of the title, then I'll put that. And then there's this block content. So other templates can extend this, keep the whole wrapper and the classes and the title prefix and suffix the same, but just allow that template to extend this section. And an example is the default block system branding block, which is your title and logo and everything like that. And this is, this all used to be, if you remember in Drupal 7, this whole bit was embedded in a default page template file, which was really annoying because you just have to take it all out because you probably just want the logo and not all the site name and stuff like that. It just takes up space. And really in this case, who's ever going to show a title on a system branding block? But okay, it shows you how this works and it's a good example of how you might be able to use this. I actually don't use this very much myself. I haven't really found a particularly good use for blocks and extends, but it's something you'd come across in these block templates. So it's worth knowing about and maybe you might find a good way to use it. So this is going to get the full wrapper from the block template. It has this extends at the top. It extends block.html.twig. It has the block content here, and it's just going to put that in in the block section in the block template. And then there's all this stuff about if there's a site slogan or a site name and things like that. So here's another interesting one. In this site, we have... I'll show you on this case, I'm not, this one I am logged in, and on this article I see there's no comments, be the first. So I added a little bit of extra usability here to show, okay, there's no comments yet. What happens when there's no comments versus what, when there are comments, especially if you're not logged in, because if you're not logged in, you don't see the comment form, and I wanted to have this, there's no comments yet, so create an account and log in. And then we're actually using Drupal comments here so far. The site just launched last week, so I don't think there are any comments yet. We'll see how it goes. I think it's useful, valuable to have the content as part of the site and not using yet another third party service, especially with this client. And he's somewhat web savvy, but I didn't really want to send him into some other thing, especially if users have to log in anyway and we're expecting them to be fairly well behaved. So what we have is a template file, and it took me a while to kind of figure out what Drupal is doing here and what to do if the comments are closed or if the comments are open and things like that. So we have if the comment status is open or there are already comments, then we're going to print this. Otherwise, you get an empty div, so we don't want an empty div there. We want to make sure that there are actually comments enabled on this node before we start printing stuff. And then we have the usual kind of title prefix, title suffix, and put that. If there are already comments, then we're going to output them. Otherwise, if there's a comment form, which means the user is logged in and has access to comments, then we're going to say, no comments yet, be the first, translate that. Otherwise, if comments are open, there's no comments, this is, means the user is not logged in, they don't have access to comments, they have to log in in order to do anything. So then we're going to get the path to user.register, which is a system root. We're going to get the path to user.login. These are standard pages, they don't need any parameters like a node ID or whatever. And then we're actually going to open this in a modal. So this is a kind of cool thing that you can do directly in Drupal 8 if you have a J just make sure the jQuery UI library is enabled um, in that library that's accessible to this page. And then we can just really easily make something open, making any link open in a modal. So we're going to translate this section yet, no comments yet. We have to add the class use Ajax, say it's a modal. 
add this path that we just created up here, the link to the user register page. And it's going to set a bunch of dialogue options for this modal. And there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Another or login and create an account. Same modal vari variables. We want the same width and height. And then when we're not logged in, oops, that's the one where I am logged in. We can create an account. There's my modal with my new account form. It's got all rid of all the site template stuff. Or log in. There it is. Standard login form. So it's really easy to do. And then finally in this template, if the comments form there, we're gonna form is there. They're logged, that means they're logged in, they have access to print comments, and it's enabled on this node, then print the comment form. In the field template, we can look at looping. And this is pretty complicated stuff in a field template. I think this is from Classy? I think so. So anyway, this is actually setting two variables for classes. It's setting the classes on the field wrapper and setting title classes. So title classes can do the same course sort of thing about add classing classes, or you can remove classes there if you want. Where is the loop? There it is. So if there's multiple items, then we're gonna put them as a list. I think this is actually a custom one that I did to put multiple items as a list. So four items in items, it's gonna put them as a list and end loop. So it's pretty easy that way. And then you can do things with keys in there too if you need to. Another loop, if there's not multiple items, you're just gonna put it in a div wrapper. And then there says, the rest of the conditional, if the label is hidden, else do this. Same kind of thing. This could have actually made use of some embeds or includes. Then it gets a little bit more complicated too, which is always a decision to make. If, you know, you're adding a bunch of includes and then you get spaghetti and you wonder where that's, everything's going, everything's fitting together. So this is the last template we can look at and this is the menu template with macros. I didn't really understand macros very well at first, and I haven't really come across a good way to use them, but this is uh, a great example on the menu template. So it's creating the menu links, and this is gonna keep going and recalling itself. So the menu is called, the macro is called menu links. It's wrapped around here, and then it's calling itself again after it starts outputting all these menu levels and menu items. It's setting classes inside a loop. So this is setting that right just inside this loop. And then it's gonna call that macro again. Menu, menu links. It's passing a bunch of parameters to that, so it'll just keep going as long as you have menu levels that it's set to output. So that's all actually I had to go through, and I hope it made some sense. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Uh, is there any advantage to using includes over embeds? Well, it's really about, the question was, is there an advantage to using includes over embeds? And it actually depends on what you're expecting in that include or embed, what variables you're expecting. So the embed is going to get the same variables that you have in the template that you embedded in, and that's all it's going to know about. If you need to pass it different variables, because you're using it in from different template files that have different things, and even something like using something from a common template or a node template is a little bit different, because I think the node template uses the author, but the comment template uses the user. So you might want to output that in the same way, but the variables are called something different before it gets to that template. So that's kind of the main distinction. Um, in the documentation link that I had here, there's a really good article at the bottom from chapter three, and she really goes into a lot of detail about the distinctions between them, and there's a lot more kind of subtleties and different things that you can use with embeds. And there's things like you can't use the same include twice in the same template, but you can do that with embeds. So there's some little idiosyncrasies like that as well. Yes? Like the, in the IDE, I can uh, 
No. Yeah, this is a Twig plugin for Adam. I just remembered, speaking of debugging, we can actually look at what happens when we can't debug something. So this is, let me make sure I'm using, looking at one that we're actually using. That one. So I don't know, let's say we want to check what variables are available in our content array. We can just um, kint content. Go to where I'm logged in. And there I'm going to get it. This is a Flexbox or grid display, so it's putting it in a weird place, but there it is. So then I can just get everything right where I am in the template file, and you don't have to be hopping around to, you know, put something in a theme preprocessor or whatever it is to debug. Yes? Um, so that your twig isn't uh, is being cached. Um, when I said auto loading is false, but all my projects are still cached. Is there something I gotta do something else to say? Set it in your um like in your services, services file. In your services yeah. It's still caching. Yeah. Okay. Because are you have to do you make sure that the answer is Yeah. 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 Okay. That took me a lot of first two and I couldn't remember exactly what it was. I got the debugging to work, so, yeah. it, so it's the right file, but all of, all of my developers have to just pure caches. Like yeah, it. yeah, and it should be making sure that you will know, also find that happens is sometimes if I run a composer update, if everything's updated, that developer services file is back to not having it in there. So double checking and then like, you know, in case I'm asking to take a picture, it's not being Oh, sure. Yeah, I didn't really go into stuff like, sorry, the question was about making sure that Twig debugging is on, which I didn't really go into in this case about how to make sure that uh, development services is on and that your Twig files aren't getting cached. So... There's my development services. So what you need to do if you want to make sure that your Twig files aren't getting hashed on every load is to make sure that you're using a development services and a development settings in your development environment. And then you can just set these parameters right in, in here and it'll make sure that you don't have to clear a cache every time that you want to make a change to a Twig file. And there's instructions somewhere on Drupal.org about how to do this. But as I was saying to you, Nick, um, sometimes this has gotten reset on me when I've done an updated Drupal. So we're just uh, talking about how to make sure that it's always going to make sure that it's reloading and you don't have to clear cache. Any other questions? So the question was, can an embed change a parent's variable? And I actually haven't tried to do that to see what happens if you change it in the embed. That would be interesting to see what happens. We can try it. We have one. This one. Yeah, let's do it in there. just set this might choke because it's not an array yeah that didn't do anything so no I don't think you can change it or accidentally change it okay any other questions Great item or is it null or it's 
That was a question about the inline conditionals in the setting, you know, like view mode, if there is a view mode. So that's actually checking if there is a view mode, then output that class. And Liam was asking what happens if it's not there. It's just going to do nothing. Yes? I don't think that matters. There's also another interesting thing that you might see somewhere. And let me see if I can find it. Yeah, in between the item attributes. Yeah, that's just going to print it out. So I think that's fine. One thing you might see is something like, let's see if I can find one. It might be something like this. Actually, I better find one. Sorry, I can't find an example. There's a way to strip extra spacing around an element, but I can't actually find an example. There's some you might see in the default templates, especially in Classy, where it's stripping out extra spaces. Okay, any other questions? Here's a views template. This is a kind of straightforward default views view template. So we can do lots of things with altering views templates, which is a lot easier than it used to be, I think. So it's set in classes like it did before. This is embedding. This is where I'm doing some stuff to fix whether views titles link somewhere or not, which is kind of inconsistent. And then it's got all the standard view stuff. If there's a view header, I would put it. If it, there's exposed filters, do that. All these attachments before. You might find a case where you want to move these things around and change the order of the header and the attachments and things like that. Yes? We have some time. Perhaps show us the pre-process functions. Sure. There's one that we came across, which was a custom variable, which I was looking at whether things were external links or not. And that's, in this one is from the Heat Informatics website, this is a conditional if it's an external link. So we'll look in my preprocess function, which I've never got around to getting my editor to automatically recognize a .theme file as a PHP file. So here's my no preprocess node function. So if you're not a PHP developer, it might seem like a lot of difficult code, but it's actually pretty easy to learn this bit by bit and you know, look for examples online and slowly get to doing more development and get out of the, the templating a little bit more. And you can really do a really lot of cool stuff from here. So this one is that view mode where there's some view modes that need a bit bigger image style. And this is actually dependent on the view. And these two views, I just want to send it a bigger image style. This is a bit tricky to get, but once I've figured it got, 
And it actually has the view that this is displayed in as part of the variables in the preprocess function. Find out what the view display is. And then if it's in these couple of views and it's this view display, then I'm going to use this, set this variable to use the big card style. And I actually use that in this embed where it says if you use big start card style. And then you can just use that like any other variables if you've passed in a preprocess function. You can just output it like any other variables that are accessible to the template and it acts like any other variables that are there. So I'm just adding to the array here, add a variable, use big card style. This is stuff that's not even in use anymore. And this is all this conditional about whether we're going to open an external link or not. If there's a flag that it's featured, then, or if it has a video, or if it has a file, a PDF embed, or otherwise that link, that external link field is empty, then I'm going to use, say it's an internal link, which I don't even think I use that variable, but sometimes. And otherwise, if that field visit this website, I didn't call it that. It's one of these legacy things where we have these weird field value and content type names because somebody long ago decided to call it that. And so here's this variable's external link. It's true, so now it's accessible to the node template. And again, this, uh, yeah, this is in the node template, then I can just use it like any other variable in the node template. If it's an external link that's custom, then I include that whole submitted by that open in a new window line. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, so I guess we have about seven minutes to the next session starts. So thank you all for coming, and I'm glad so many people are still interested in doing Twig and everyone hasn't gone on to using all the JavaScript frameworks and fancy things like that. <laughs>